Hello and welcome to 2.1 Forces and Free Body Diagrams. So this is the start of our second chapter which is going to be all about forces. Remember that our unit overall is about dynamics and dynamics is the study of the causes of motion. That's what this unit is about. Now chapter one we looked at kinematics, which is just the study of motion, where we saw how uh, we can describe motion using velocity, acceleration, those terms. But now in this chapter we're going to be looking at forces and what's actually causing this motion. So, a force, the symbol for this is F and it's a vector so we can draw an arrow over it. And a force is a push or a pull and any force could be described that way. We have two categories of forces. We have non-contact forces and contact forces. So non-contact forces, well those that's a force between objects that aren't touching. And examples of those would be gravity, electrical force, magnetic force, those sorts of forces. Whereas contact forces, well, that's a force between touching objects. And so that could be tension or friction or applied force. These are all contact forces. Okay, so hopefully that's familiar. Um, we've got a list here of a whole bunch of different forces and we're just going to put down their symbols. So normal force, we call that Fn. Tension, Ft. Friction, Ff. Static friction, Fs. Kinetic friction, Fk. Air resistance, F. Air, and that one gets sort of its own word there. Applied force, Fa. And reaction force, Fr. So those are a bunch of the different forces that we're going to be dealing with in this chapter. And um, you notice probably that for friction we have three different values, three different names. So FF is the general name, this one is the general name that we use for friction. But usually we want to be more specific. We want to say is it static friction or kinetic friction. So that's why we have FS and FK. I want to say one more thing about static friction which is that Fs, static friction, sort of has a range. It can have, it can be all the way down to zero and it can be up to some maximum value for an object. So often we talk about Fs max, which is the maximum static friction. And if that's not familiar, well we're going to be getting back into that in a couple of lessons when we talk about friction. Okay, so those are all our different forces. The last thing we need to talk about here is different types of diagrams. So we have two types of diagrams that we draw when we deal with forces. A system diagram is just a drawing of a problem. And generally this is a sort of realistic drawing. Whereas a free body diagram is a simple line drawing that just shows the forces, showing forces. We'll take a look at those on the next few problems. So the first problem says you are pushing with a horizontal force to the right against a large printer on a table. The printer remains stationary. Draw a system diagram and a free body diagram of the forces acting on the printer. And notice free body diagram, we just call that FBD. Okay, so I'm going to draw a system diagram first for my printer. So my printer looks something like this, something along these lines, and maybe it's got a little, um, let's say it's got a little scanning bed on the top here, so it looks maybe something like, like this. There's my printer, and let's say it's got a little paper tray in the front here, maybe it's got a bit of paper coming out the front, like this. 
and we'll put it on top of a table just for good measure. It's on top of a table and let's give that table a bit of shape here, some legs, and we'll give that printer a little power cord too, just for good measure. There's a little power cord. So there's my system diagram and you can see that that's pretty um, pretty realistic. Now I'm actually missing something. It says I'm pushing against it. Um, I'm pushing with a horizontal force to the right. So that means I need to have some sort of hand here. I'm going to draw a little hand, maybe just like this. And there's my hand and I'm pushing I'm pushing that uh, printer now to the right. So there's my system diagram. Now you don't need to make it as detailed as the drawing I've just made, or you can make it more detailed. I, you know, it's, there's no rules about this, but the idea is that we want to try to show what's happening. Whereas a free body diagram is a lot simpler. We just draw a box. That's my printer. doesn't matter what I'm drawing. It's always just a box like this. And I draw the forces. This printer has gravity acting downwards. It has normal force acting upwards. It has my applied force. I'm pushing it to the right. And it says in the problem that the printer is not moving. So that means that there needs to be enough friction here, static friction, to keep it from moving. So there's my picture. I can say one last thing here. I might want to say that the net force is equal to zero. This just tells me that all the forces are balanced. There's my free body diagram. Okay, we'll try making uh, those sorts of diagrams now for the next problem. It says a, s a rope pulls a skier up a hill to the right at a constant velocity. Draw a system diagram and a free body diagram. So, I'm going to draw this here. I'm going to draw my skier. Here's my skier and he's on some skis. Let's see, he's being pulled up the hill by a rope and we'll just draw the hill. So here's the hill that they're being pulled up and that's my system diagram. Now I want to draw a free body diagram now. Notice that it says that it, I'm being pulled at a constant velocity. So that's good. That's going to help me draw my, my diagram here. I'll draw my box. Now going up the hill at this angle is going to be tension and gravity is going to be acting straight downwards. And what else do we have? We have the normal force. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface, so it's going to be going against the hill like this. And we have some sort of friction here pulling me back. Now it does say that I'm moving, so this is kinetic friction. Kinetic friction means that I'm moving, but I am being moved at a constant speed, a constant velocity again. So again this means that the net force has to equal zero. F net still equals zero. And that's because I'm moving at a constant velocity. So there's our two diagrams um, and we'll look later at how to actually solve that sort of a problem, but that's I think a pretty neat problem. Okay, turning to the next page here. This says net force in two dimensions. And net force in this class, we're going to be representing net force like this, F net. Okay? And so this symbol here might be new to you, and we're going to talk about that just below. You see that we're going to talk about it right here. Okay, so net force is the sum of all forces on, not on an object. So we can say that the net force, or the sum of forces, is equal to F1 plus F2 plus dot dot dot. We just add all our forces together. And notice I've used this terminology for net force. Just up above, I was, uh, sorry, on the previous page, I was calling net force F net like this. So this is acceptable. This is how we wrote it in grade 11. But in grade 12, we're going to switch to writing it this other way, which is a more mathematical way of writing it. Okay. 
So let's see, it has some other names. It's also called the total force or the resultant force. These are all names for the same thing. So this si uh, symbol here, what does it mean? This is the Greek letter sigma. Greek letter sigma. And in math, we use it to mean the sum. So here we're saying the sum of f. All right. Now, um, remember that we are going to want to break our forces into components. So we can have, for instance, the sum of the x forces and the sum of the y forces, or the net x force and the net y force. Okay, and so we're going to be dealing with that in the next problem here. So this problem says that a baseball player lightly bunts a baseball with an average force of 14 newtons at 29 degrees above the horizontal. The force of gravity on the baseball is uh, 1.4 newtons. Calculate the net force on the ball at the moment of contact, assuming that air resistance is negligible. So to do this, we draw our crosshairs. We draw our forces. So we can say that we have a force of 1.4 newtons in this direction. This is 29 degrees. And then we have another uh, force, oh I'm sorry, that's not 1.4, that's 14 newtons in that direction. So this is 14 newtons, and then downwards we have 1.4 newtons. Okay, so now we want to find the net x force. Well you can see from this picture that the second one doesn't have any x component, it's straight down in the y dimension. So the sum of the x forces is just going to be 14 newtons times the cosine of 29 degrees. And that gives us 12.24 newtons in the forward direction. Good. And then we do the same thing with y. So we can see that um, now we do have two pieces, so we're going to have 14 sine 29 degrees minus 1.4 newtons. And this gives us 5.387 newtons in the up direction. Okay, so these are the forces acting, Fx, Fy, so now I can draw a picture with those. I have 12 plus 5.387. 12.24, 5.387. My net force here, this is going to be net force. And I've got my angle. So to calculate this here, I'm going to use my square root. 12.24 squared plus 5.387. And this gives me a value of... 13.37 newtons. I need to get my direction. It's the tan inverse 5.387 over 12.24. And this gives me 23.75 degrees. So I can say, therefore, my net force is equal to 13 newtons, and we're talking about forward, 24 degrees up. You see that we can use forward and up just the same way that we would use east and north, the same sort of idea. Okay, so there's one more problem here. It says that a go-kart is being towed north by a car along a road with a net force of zero. The go-kart is attached to the car by two ropes. The tension in the ropes is the same, 31 newtons. The ropes make 22 degree angles to the direction of motion, one on the west and one on the east. Determine the force of friction on the go-kart. So if I was to draw a free body diagram of my go-kart, 
Well, I've got F1, I've got F2, I've got the force of kinetic friction, Fk, and I'm told here that the net force is equal to zero. That's what the problem tells me. It tells me that the, it experiences zero net force. So then, that gives me some information. Now I can break up these forces. Each of these angles is 22 degrees. This is 22 degrees as well. So what that tells me, I can say that um, the F, the net force, is equal to zero. Well, that means that uh, the net force in the x dimension is equal to zero, and the net force in the y dimension is equal to zero. So to start with, the net force in the x dimension is going to be F1 sine 22 degrees. That's in the left direction, minus F2 sine 20 de um, 22 degrees. Now we're already told that F1 and F2 are actually the same. Um, they're both 31 newtons. So this makes sense that if F1 and F2 are both uh, the same, then here we have 31 newtons. This is 31 newtons. Okay, well then that makes sense, I think, that those are just going to cancel each other out. One is pulling in the left, one is pulling in the right. So we have those two pieces are the same. That makes sense. But now if we want to find the, um, the kinetic friction, well again we can say that the net force in the y dimension is equal to zero. And here we're going to say that this is equal to twice, well it's going to equal to, um, to the two forces acting upwards. So we have, since they're both equal, we have two times 31 newtons cosine 22 degrees. That's acting upwards. Downwards is our kinetic friction. Okay, so if you take a look at this now, we can say that 0 is equal to 2 times 31 cos 22 degrees minus Fk. That lets us find Fk. Fk is equal to 2 times 31 cos 22 degrees. And now I can um, find that value here. This is 57.49 newtons. And this is going to be acting in the down direction. And I'm just going to uh, give my final therefore statement. So therefore, the kinetic friction is equal to, and I'll just round to the right number of digits, 57 newtons down. There we go. There is our final solution. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.